My name is Marlon Magdalena. I'm from Jemez Pueblo, New Mexico. I work at the Jemez Historic Site in Jemez Springs, New Mexico. Uh, I'm the instructional coordinator at the Jemez Historic Site. Now in uh, Jemez Pueblo, uh, we grow corn. Uh, corn is one of our staple crops. Uh, so it's very important for us, uh, uh, especially for our uh, the religious aspects of our lives, our daily lives. Uh, we use cornmeal you know, we, as offerings, uh, and not just the corn itself, the seeds. Uh, we also use the, the pollen that comes from the corn. And so uh, that represents uh, all aspects of the corn plant. As a Hamas person, every day we wake up, we go outside and, and greet the sun, or we pray uh, to our ancestors and ask for our daily blessings, and we use the corn uh, the corn meal that we've ground from the corn that we've grown. Flutes have been around for a long time, and then when you, when I did more research on those flutes, I was able to find out there's even older flutes that people found, uh, especially when they're excavating all these old villages, these old sites, uh, Mesa Verde, um, some cave sites in Arizona, a Pueblo Benito in uh, Chaco Canyon. So they find flutes. And they all have uh, many similarities, but they're all one type of flute. And it's called a rimblum flute. And that type of flute, I have some examples here. Um, that's the type that they made. This flute here is a, it's a replica, of course, it's not the original, but the original was about this long. It had four holes just like this. And the reason why. I say it's a hard flute to play because you have to learn how to blow onto the edge. There's three different ways you can do it. That's the easiest for me to play. And the other way is to put it between your teeth. And then the last way is a little bit a little bit harder for me. This one here is a a replica, uh, not an exact replica, but it's a close copy of uh, some of the flutes that were found in Arizona that date back to about, I believe, around 800 or so. And in that cave, it's called Broken Flute Cave, there's about four of them that they found. They're almost about the same size, same length. Uh, this one's a copy of one of those flutes. It's very narrow, very long flute. And it has six holes. That one I was just playing only had four holes. Um, not reason, I don't know, really know the reason why, it's just how they decided to make these. And you play them the same way. That last way that I showed you, it's really hard to play the, the long ones like that. Just because it's a real long flute, we can play it real easily using this method. put rain clouds or lightning bolts. Um, on this one I actually have a, a turkey. It's turkey feathers. Our turkeys are really important. We use a lot of turkey feathers. Of course on the bottom here I have corn. Two different designs of corn. And of course that's it's important. So some of the songs uh, that I create or that I use for my performances uh, are really the, the way I figure them out or if I want to make a new song on, my, on one of my flutes, um, I, I try to incorporate other songs that I've heard or maybe use them as, um, as a way of making my own melodies, uh, kind of just borrowing a melody from a song that I already know. Let's see. It's 
So on this type of flute, it's a little bit different than some of the older ones or the older styles that I've shown. The other ones are rim blown. So this one here well, works kind of like a recorder, uh, but it has two chambers and it has this on top. Can people call it a block, a bird, or a fetish? Uh, and this has a purpose. It's to create that airway that's underneath the underneath the block. So for me, I call these two chamber block flutes because it's got one chamber, two chambers, two chamber, and it's the block block flute, or just simply block flutes. So all you do have all you have to do is just blow into the end. The song I came up with on the flute is based off that melody of uh, feast day songs. So it, it's, I just call it harvest, uh, harvest time. Another type of flute that I play, uh, I also make as well, is uh, this one here. You have the rim blowns, which are just hollow tubes with holes. And then over time, people start making other types of flutes to make them either easier to play, a little bit harder, a little bit more work goes into it, but they are easier to play. So you have flutes, uh, especially down south in Mexico, that may have started off as rim blown flutes. And then eventually they figure out how to make them uh, more easily playable. And all you do is just blow into the top, just like a recorder. And you do see these types of flutes being used out here in the southwest, just because they are easier to play. And you can play it different ways. The way I play them is just having all of them as close as you can and just keeping down the middle ones because there's no holes there. It's easier to hold. Uh, some people will play it like this, just a little bit harder. I play it like this. And the song I'll play now for, well, using this flute is based off of another song that we danced during harvest time. We just got finished dancing this dance uh, uh, this past Saturday but it's based off of one of those songs and it is a, a harvest uh, a harvest time dance a harvest dance
And a lot of the old flutes, they're either made out of cottonwood, uh, uh, maybe even elderberry, uh, just because elderberry is real soft in the middle. Uh, but another type of material that they used was reed. Uh, the river reeds that grow around here nowadays are a little bit smaller. They may have gotten bigger in the past, but when people started bringing giant reed uh, to plant outside their homes for erosion control, or for making privacy fences. So you see a lot of this giant reed which was introduced to, to this area. And so it was a rim bloom. And that's what this one is, it's a rim bloom. So with these flutes, they would have had the bell on the bottom as well, made out of the gourd. And so hanging from the gourd, you have eagle plumes, which represent the rain falling, the gourd representing the rain cloud. And so we're essentially blowing uh, rain out, we're blowing clouds out. So more spiritual significance there. And then you have this one here, which is like the, the other flutes that I played earlier, a little bit easier to play. Uh, this is also made from a giant reed. Um, but it's more of the, the eastern or the eastern United States. Those people had access to a lot of river cane, so they made flutes out of river cane. Uh, so this is more of that style, uh, but made with uh, giant reed. A little bit different sound. So you have the bigger wooden flutes, but over time uh, or throughout time, people made flutes out of many different materials. Uh, another common one, especially here with for the Pueblos, people made flutes out of bone and different types of bone, uh, mostly birds of prey or even turkeys. Okay, this one here is made from a turkey bone. This one here is made from an eagle bone. Okay, now for a member of a federally recognized tribe, we can order eagles legally. Otherwise, it's illegal to even hold a, a bone or any part of an eagle. And so I actually have a permit to hold eagle bones or eagle feathers. But we used the feathers. In the past, we used to use everything. Uh, we used to use the bones to make uh, bone flutes or even whistles and had different purposes you can make music out of them and you can make whistles like this to call in birds because birds we use a lot of uh, different pueblos use different types of birds Okay, so you can do all sorts of different things out of different types of bones, different types of bone flutes, bone whistles. So people made these types of flutes, these types of instruments. Uh, they're a little bit, uh, I guess they're hard to, to obtain because not a lot of people know how to make them anymore. Or I think I'm probably the only one that knows how to make them. Because I, I use actual eagle bones. And I can't sell these. I use them for my own purposes, my own, uh, my own beliefs. That's the only way I can. Um, but the turkey bones are a little bit easier because these you can sell. You can sell these, but they they sound very similar to to the eagle bones. <laughs> That's how these ones sound, and they're real simple to make. Uh, there's actually a glue inside that people have been using for hundreds of years made from pinion sap and ashes. Other people can add charcoal uh, and other things to it just to make it a real strong, hard glue once it's dry. And it is a heat glue, so you have to heat it up and melt it and put it inside there. And that's what actually makes the sound. <laughs> 